and welcome to the seventh and final video of our Crossing Newfoundland by ATV 2020 trip. In this video, the July group goes from Serpentine Lake to Pirate's Haven to spend the night. Then they spend the next day riding to the ferry terminal in Port Abbas to take the ferry back to Nova Scotia. The September group rides from Pirate's Haven and Robinson's to Port Abbas also to take the ferry back to Nova Scotia. As usual, there's lots of good scenery and fun to be had. The July group was up bright and early and they started to uh, pack up their tents and make breakfast at kind of at the same time. And uh, I don't know if you camp much, but if you do, you know that it's kind of hard to sleep in when you camp in anyway. The sun, as soon as the sun hits that tent first thing in the morning, it starts to get warm pretty quick. When you leave Serpentine Lake, you take an old snowmobile trail uh, about 25 kilometers back up to the rail bed, which is this blue line here that I'm showing. Um, you're going to be heading uh, southwest here, and you're going to go by George's Lake. George's Lake is really long. It's about six miles long, and uh, you drive about five miles of it all along the coast, uh, along the edge of it here, and um, we stop right around the middle to have a break here on our way through towards Galantz. Daryl and I were leading the way here, and... Um, it was really dry and dusty this day, and the, the dust clouds behind the machines were going back 500 meters probably, so everyone was staying back a really long distance to not eat dust, and uh, we were waiting for the other fellows to show up as we pulled in here. The water's not usually this low. You can't usually come down here like this, this far. Back on the dusty trail again, heading west towards Galantz. After we left George's Lake, we get back on the rail bed and went towards Galantz and stopped at the Camp 7. And then we got back on the rail bed again, went towards Stephenville Crossing. We stopped and got gas down there. And shortly after we got gas, we went back on that beach route. And before we drove up the beach, we just totally stopped and had another break. We stayed here for about a half an hour, had a barbecue, and then we get back on the trail, and we could not bypass the sand pit. Every time we go by this thing, we always have to take even just five minutes to run up and then back down again. We were making great time. We left the uh, the beach down in Stephenville, Stephenville Crossing area. Then we stopped at that sand pit there briefly. We kept on going. Uh, we trucked on until we got the Fishel's Bridge. There's a nice trail that takes you down underneath the bridge to get to the water. <laughs> That's how you go in. Oh. <laughs> Those of you that are wondering, Newfoundland is not typically known for its hot weather, but there are a few weeks throughout the summer where uh, it can get to be quite hot, over 30 degrees Celsius. Pirate's Haven is only a few miles up the road from here, so we got there at a really good time, so we had lots of daylight left. When you get to Pirate's Haven off the rail bed, you're coming in the back way, uh, which is where we're coming right now, up towards their main building, and uh, they have a uh, a couple of cabins that are behind us that you haven't seen yet. There's a new uh, glamping unit here we're going by on the left, which are really nice, like open concept places. And uh, there's their tower there to the left that has a few bunk rooms. And uh, the main building we're coming up to here right now. We went in here for a few minutes to check in with Paul and Ruth, and then we went right back to our cabins. Like I've said, the trailway is dusty. Holy dust. We unloaded our gear, we got cleaned up, and then we went down to the main building and uh, we had supper down there like we usually do 
And uh, even though you can eat up at the cabins, if you bring your own food, they're fully stocked and they have barbecues and a full kitchen. We love eating down here at the restaurant. It's, uh, the food is always fantastic. Um, it was about four years ago I was looking at buying, or yeah, at least four years ago, about buying a side by side. I, I had a snowmobile and did a lot of that. Anyway, I started looking at trips I could do, different things. And one thing that was always in my mind was actually crossing Newfoundland. And of course, if you look for anything now about crossing Newfoundland, especially by ATV, first thing that pops up is Patrick's, at the time, was a blog. So I started looking at the videos and the vlog uh, and started looking at it a little more carefully and realized, I think, I think I know that guy, I'm pretty sure it's Patrick. And sure enough, it was him. And I uh, sent him a message, uh, an email message, uh, and he got right back to me. He said, yeah, he, he does the trip. He's done it at that point. He's done it, I don't know, I think it was eight times um, and wants to continue to do so. And I'm like, I'm going with you next time you go. Did we just become best friends? Yep. So that's what we did. I went in 2017. So I actually knew Patrick, but didn't know he did all this outside of our professional lives. So it was the first that I knew that he actually even had a side by side. So, so last night we slept out in Serpentine Lake on the beach. Beautiful night. At some point during the night, somebody got a visit from a bear, commonly known as the Bluetooth bear. So once everybody started to pack things in, uh, Three. mainly Patrick and Daryl, once they were sound asleep, the bear came out and checked in on both of them. <laughs> so basically you walk up to the tent while somebody's sleeping and rub up against the tent, play the sounds, and uh, the happiness starts from there. <laughs> Both groups are now caught up to each other, and they're both leaving from Robinson's here. This is Pirate's Haven, and uh, what a great spot, like I've mentioned before. Uh, the cabins are great, the glamping units. Paul and Ruth, the owners, are just fantastic people. And uh, we were getting ready here after packing up our gear. We're going to go down to the main lodge and have a breakfast before we uh, start out the day. And, and Bruce went up to the top of the tower here to check it out. I don't think he'd seen it before. They have uh, cruise quarters in there, like some bunk rooms and uh, other rooms that you can rent as well. And uh, here's a view from the top, and here's a view from the top at night. Ruth is the owner of Pirate's Haven along with her husband Paul and one of the many things Donna does there is cook great food. Yeah, we love what we do, man. That's the thing about it, man. Gotcha. I'm, I'm turning into a wellness retreat now. Uh, my marketing this year before it comes out is going to be when it comes out for 2021. Yeah. It's going to be under a uh, Pirate's Haven Wellness Retreat or Wellness Resort. But we're going to put it there now, so we're going to tie it up for a day of ATV and a day of fishing. Then these could be come here, and we'll be taking a walk. We're going for a nature walk. And the person that's with us will be describing, telling you all your plant life. So you guys getting all ready when you're in? Oh, yeah, we're all ready to rock and roll. Okay. We got all our gear packed up in our machines. Well, and, I'm ready, uh, uh, if you're staying at Pirate's Haven, you have to go see Robinson's Head, which is a bluff across the street. Uh, there's a trail up there where the uh, the cottages are, and then you follow that trail down towards the a main road, paved road, but you only have to drive about 100 feet on this road until you come to this orange trail. That's about five kilometers. It does a loop all the way back to the cabins. You're about 300 feet up there, and the view overlooking this out to the ocean is just fantastic. After spending a few minutes at the bluff taking some pictures, we're on our way back around the rest of that loop. was nice enough to escort us part of the way back towards the ferry on a route we had never taken before and he uh, made a few stops to show us some interesting places uh, like this monument here to Bay St. George South where some uh, stowaways were kind of cast off of a ship in the middle of uh, April and had to make their way back to land and the hardships that they went through. One of them died, right? Tied to Scotland. 
Oh, okay. I'm taking so right those over on the other end. Yeah, I'm going a little further over on the other end of that knob picture. over here. And then we're going up over that mountain. Yeah. And I'm not okay. joking. <laughs> what was that? Paul continued on with our trip. Uh, he took us up over a mountain we had never been on before on this whole trail at all. And uh, on our way, we came across this bridge that had definitely seen better days. Paul was starting up a fire to cook up his famous moose sausages. Paul and Ruth have taken us on some really fun day trips over the years. If you check out my 2018 and 2019 video series, you'll see some of the ones that they've taken us on. Micah Pond and Sandy Point are two of my favorite spots. Get them to take you to either one of those places. We finished up lunch, Paul packed up his gear, and then he led us back to the rail bed. If you're going to do this trip and cross Newfoundland, it doesn't matter if you go east or west, or west to east, make sure you spend a few nights with Paul and Ruth at Pirate's Haven. You will not regret it. Normally when we leave Robinson's here, we jump on this blue trail, which is the trailway, and we head west towards Port Bass. But this time, Paul took us along the highlands up here, and then we crossed over and came out over this direction here, which is Codroy Pond. So we pulled in off the trail there for a few minutes for a break and threw up the drone. And then the September group, they went up this mountain peak over here in South Branch. It's a steep hill. It's not really that hard to get up, it's, but it's pretty steep, so you have to go slow. We skipped it in July because by the time we get to the base of that hill, uh, it was so hot on our machines, we're actually running quite hot, so we figured we wouldn't go up this long, uh, slow hill because it would probably overheat the machines. You can never get uh, the perspective on video of how steep the trails are, but I wish I had uh, something to be able to tell me exactly what our slope was coming up the steepest point of that mountain because it was, it was really steep. Unfortunately, it was just way too windy up there that day to throw the drone up. We're on our way back down the mountain and I have my foot off the gas and uh, that's just the machine crawling along down the hill. After we left that mountain and uh, got back down to the rail bed, we kept going uh, west till we got to Little Codroy Pond. This is a nice little trail in here. It's, uh, let's see here, according to my GPS, it says 2.8 miles, so that's about 5 kilometers. Uh, slow going, again, but not difficult. And uh, the view from in here in this area here in Codroy Pond is just beautiful. So uh, both groups went in here. If you like the scenery and you want to do this trip by yourself, this is a perfect time for me to remind you about my website, www.crossingnewfoundlandbyatv.com. Everything you need to know to plan your own trip is there. All my GPS tracks, information on hotels and cabins and campgrounds uh, or beaches or anything like that that you want to stay at, it's all there. Just sit yourself down in front of a computer for a few hours, grab a pad of paper, make some notes, 
And if you have any questions, send them to me through Facebook. A short distance from the rail bed in a little area called Doyle's, there's a gas station and a convenience store called JNL's, and uh, we often go in there and stop in and get, uh, and uh, you know, a Red Bull or something like that. And we're actually not too too far now from Port of Bass, but there's still a few nice things to see. When we used to drive ATVs, we would always stop and get gas here, but the side by sides carry so much more gas, we can get a lot farther distance. They'll take us easily to uh, the ferry terminal. Our next stop is this really nice little beach. Uh, it's only a few kilometers off the rail bed. If you're coming west to east like we are this way, you can take this route in here to come out to it. And uh, it's it's totally worth visiting, especially if the weather's nice. Uh, you know, if the weather's kind of crummy when you come through here, you know, you might not want to bother. But uh, And if the tide is low, you can come right back out uh, through the beach this way to get back to the rail bed. When we head back to Nova Scotia from Port of Basque, we always take the midnight ferry and travel all night. The nice thing about that is it doesn't really matter how late you get into Port of Basque, even if it's after dark, the ferry's not going to leave until a quarter to twelve. So we had lots of time to just kill and we weren't too far from uh, Port of Basque as it was, so we were just playing around uh, in no rush at all, both in July and September. The only difference uh, about September was when we were at this spot. Uh, I'll show you in a minute here, the waves were much, much higher because it was uh, really windy. Like I showed you before, when you're going into the beach, there's two ways you can get in here. Uh, one is along the beach itself, and one is in a trail. Um, on our, we were trying to get back out here in September, and the, the water was just too high along the beach. We thought maybe we might be able to get out along uh, this crest here and these, the, uh, the bluff, but uh, we couldn't. We had to turn around and go back and then take the trail back out to the road. But in the summer, we were able to drive all the way down this, all the way back to the rail bed. And in September, when we had to double back, we were uh, parked at the top of uh, a bluff before we went back down to the trail and we noticed it was really a nice spot to take a picture so we stopped for a few more minutes took a couple more pictures and then we finally get back on the trail all right we're gonna line them up right here a lot of people have been asking me lately what i use for my gps that is a samsung galaxy tab e uh, in a simple waterproof case and uh, i use locust maps pro and it works fantastic for me that app will let you download maps 
for uh, offline use, so you don't need a cell phone signal or anything like that. It works just fine without it. I call this the Flintstone House. I'm not sure what these really were uh, years ago, but they're right at the base of a trail. Once you come across these, um, look up the hill and you'll see a trail that's about a kilometer long, takes you right up to the Sugarloaf Mountain. And it's a pretty easy ride up there and it's a really nice view. On the September trip, we were going to skip going up to Sugarloaf and just go right to JT Cheeseman Park uh, to try to get there before dark, but we ran into a road crew just a little bit past the Flintstone house there that was uh, tearing up the decking on a bridge, so they said they were going to be about an hour or so, so we decided to come up to the top of uh, Sugarloaf anyways. The mountain you can see on the other side that's clouded in is uh, the mountain we were on on the first video of this series at the very beginning before I went down and broke my uh, or bent my tie rod. We could see that the guys on the bridge were uh, finishing up, so we decided to head back down and they'd be ready to go by the time they get out of the way. And man, I'll tell you, I was really impressed. Those guys were really fast. When we showed up, they were just pulling up the old decking. And by the time we went up and, uh, you know, messed around a bit and took some pictures and stuff and came back down, they had the whole thing totally replaced with new decking. There was still some daylight left when we got to JT Cheeseman Park in July. Now you can see why we try to get to this place right around sunset. The September group missed the sunset at JT Cheeseman Park, but at least we got it on Sugarloaf Mountain. And uh, now we're on our way back to the boat, but we still stopped at uh, JT Cheeseman anyways. That's a snake looking thing that's hanging from the light bar in case you're wondering. It's actually a, a piece that I found on the beach earlier uh, with a bunch of seaweed. It looked just like a snake, so I used it for a prank. 
I've had a lot of people email me the last few months and wondering how many kilometers I have on my machine. Well, there you go. It's actually a little bit more than that right now. It was a little more difficult for us to get to uh, the beach before sunset, even though we got there earlier because the sun sets a lot earlier in September than it does in July. We are now arriving in Fort Basque. There is the orange train up ahead that signals the beginning or end of the trail, depending on which way you're going. And for us, this is the end of the trip this year. And we had two trips and man, we we're so lucky to get that this year out of 2020, all the craziness that was going on. And uh, I can't wait to go back already for 2021. So if you're wondering what it looks like on the map, Right here is the bridge we just crossed. The train is right here. Uh, we just pulled up to the section here of the street and we're gonna cross the street over to this Irving gas station, but you don't have to drive the highway anymore. We used to do that years uh, previous. Now there's a trail that goes right alongside the edge of the highway and it takes you right into the uh, into the yard, right into the ferry terminal. When you're following that trail, uh, it's marked out here in orange. You're going to come around a tight fence, and then uh, you're going to come across the street. And when you come over across the street, you're going to come right out to the uh, the actual ferry building, which is right here, the, the check-in building. And then once you get in here, uh, they're just going to put you in line to wait for the boat. All the restaurants and common areas were closed in the ferry this year because of COVID. So you had to stay in your room once you get on there. So they gave you a bag lunch that had a sandwich, bottle of water, and an apple. So if it's like that again in 2021, bring your own food. The trip was great. We had a great time. It was amazing. Uh, there's so much scenery. The people were great. The food was great. We had a really good time. Would you do it again? Absolutely, yeah. I'll do it again. Uh, probably next year and looking forward to it already. So, Are you wrecked now? What? Are you wrecked? Yeah, I you am wrecked. You gotta do this more yeah, now? Yeah, I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good. I have to break the news to the wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you gotta get a lot of gear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good place, guys. Yeah. Right you. We'll see you guys. See you, brother. See you brother. Till the next one. Nice to meet you. Well, that's it. That's the entire series for 2020. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. And remember, if you want to do this trip, you can plan it yourself without a guide. Go to my website, crossingnewfoundlandbyatv.com.